Hello everybody, this is Tim. I recently watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the prequel to the remake. It's pretty much just a remake of the remake. <laughs> the story is so fucking similar. This is supposed to be a prequel and you're supposed to, uh, obviously in a prequel you're supposed to learn new stuff about the Texas Chainsaw family that you didn't know in the first one, like how they became killers and shit like that that you would expect to learn. You don't really get any of that in this film. Um, you get like a little little thing with Arling Army's character where he talks about how he was in the war and shit and how they had to eat people and all that. So I guess that's what helps make him a cannibal. But for everybody else, they're just psychopaths already. <laughs> so whatever. <clears throat> so you don't really learn shit about anybody here. Even Leatherface, you don't learn anything new about him. Nothing that you didn't already know. There's nothing here about him. You don't get to see how he really became a killer. You get to see his real mom in this film. And she births him out of Slaughterhouse. Ooh. <laughs> they fucking the owner takes him and just throws him in the trash that's some cold shit <laughs> but anyway throws him in the trash and he gets found by mama from the first film uh, I think her name's the character's name is Luda May I believe and she takes him back home to Arley Army and old fart who's not in the wheelchair in this film and basically they just raise him and that's the that's the origin of Leatherface that's it that's that's all there's nothing here <laughs> You could have told this entire origin story in one flashback <laughs> in the first film, if you felt like it. But anyway, I do own this film, the unrated version, so uh, it's probably more enjoyable for the kills and shit in this version. I mean, the film itself is probably more enjoyable because of the extra gore and everything than the R-rated version, which I haven't seen. Uh, but this film, it's pretty much the same exact setup as the first, as the remake. There's not really anything magnificent here or anything interesting. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I'd give this film two stars. It's better than Next Generation, and it's also better than it's also better than Part Three uh, because it has more life to it than the third one, despite the fact that there's really nothing to this film. Uh, but it's not better than Part One. It's not better than Part Two, and it's not even better than the remake. It is better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, though. <laughs> But um, Leatherface in this film, he's played good. It's the same actor, I think, from the first, re from the, I almost said the first remake. <laughs> Might as well just be the first remake. It's the same actor from that film, and he plays him fine here again. You get Jordana Brewster in the film playing a character of Chrissy, and then you get this other girl who's a friend, the character named Bailey, and then you get Eric, her boyfriend, and you get Dean, his brother. <clears throat> And uh, they're heading to fucking, for him and his brother to re-enlist in Vietnam, or him to re-enlist in Vietnam and his brother to enlist. And uh, from the beginning of the movie here, like I said, you get the Leatherface birth and all that shit. Um, Our Army's back in this film, once again, the highlight of this film. Without him, this I would, I would hate this film. I would hate it. But anyway, he's the highlight. Uh, you get through the Leatherface birthing scene and all that shit, and he's with the family, and you skip over his entire childhood, which you could have added some more to the character there. Yes, I know that you don't want to get too familiar with the character to make him uh, not scary, but the whole point of doing a prequel is to show stuff so we know how he became who he is, and we don't really get much of that. But anyway, so you skip over his entire childhood. We could have at least had one scene here, but anyway... But the problem is, we don't. We, there's nothing we can learn about this character that we don't already fucking know. He was probably picked on as a kid, and he had a skin disease. Okay, bam. That that tells you right there. That's all you need to know. That's five seconds of dialogue. You, there's no reason to make an entire origin story about this. But whatever. <laughs> um, he fucking works in a slaughterhouse. The whole town is like leaving because it's just a shithole. And uh, the guy who owns the slaughterhouse is like shutting down and Leatherface in there and chopping up some meat or whatever. And he tells uh, the guy who works with him to go down there and tell him to leave. And he's like, you gotta get out of here, you dumb animal. And you think Leatherface is going to kill him, but he doesn't kill him yet because he hasn't reached his killing peak yet. <laughs> so uh, basically after that, you get Le uh, Leatherface doesn't like his boss there. And he sees his boss up there in the window and he knows that he's the one that sent the guy down there to tell him to get the fuck out of Dodge. So the face gets pissed off uh, over that. You get a decent, a real well, I wouldn't say decent, I'd say really good kill scene here. It's entertaining. Leatherface beats the fuck out of him with a sledgehammer. Uh, it's pretty good. The kill scenes in this film are really good. The gore is good. That's the highlight of the film is the gore. Without the gore, this film is, there's nothing. Um, 
He kills him with a sledgehammer, entertaining scene, fucking bashed him in the head with it. Pretty good. Uh, meanwhile, you got them heading to like, uh, go to enlist for Vietnam and all that shit. Um, then the sheriff shows up at the, at the fucking Chainsaw family's house. Uh, he gets a uh, Hoyt. <laughs> might, as well, might as well be Hoyt. Or Charlie is his name, I believe. His real name. Um, but gets him to come and help him uh, access the situation, I guess. To help uh, bring Leatherface down without a fight. <laughs> I fucking go get him, and he gets out of the vehicle to get Leatherface to drop his chainsaw. And fucking, he leaves the fucking shotgun right on the damn dashboard. Like, what? What cop does that? Um, give me a break. Uh, Arlie Army takes the shotgun, shoots the sheriff. Uh, basically, takes his uniform and becomes the sheriff. <laughs> That's pretty fucking funny. <laughs> like I said, he shotguns him in the face. It's an entertaining scene. It's alright. There's nothing magnificent here. He uh, f uh, fucking takes the sheriff, they cook him and eat him, and you don't get, I mean, like, are we supposed to believe this family is, like, was semi-normal or something before this happened? Because most people would be like, I'm not fucking eating somebody, but these people are just okay with it and just go with it. So once again, what's the point in telling the origin story about people who are already, always fucking crazy to begin with? <laughs> oh, it's useless. But anyway... So they're heading through that town, obviously, to go enlist for Vietnam. Fucking, there's these gang of bikers there that fuck with them. Uh, okay scene. But they're still heading through there. Uh, the, the fucking uh, chick biker, one of them's a girl, and she comes back after him again, and she's fucking with them, and they hit a random cow and crash. Like, what? Okay. <laughs> they crash. Uh, she's fucking trying to take their money and shit. Arlie Army shows up in his sheriff mobile. <laughs> Arlie Jackass Army. <laughs> He's there in his sheriff mobile. He fucking just guns her down. <laughs> She's packing a weapon. Then he basically takes the kids hostage, except for Jordana Brewster, who plays Chrissy because she was flung from the vehicle during the crash, so he doesn't see her. But he basically takes them hostage. Uh, he's got them in the back of his squad car. He, oh, he, uh, the younger brother doesn't want to go to Vietnam, so he like burned his draft card. And Arlie Army's character was in the army, so he wants to, of course, beat the fuck out of whoever burnt their draft card. <laughs> so he's driving them there, and the younger brother, uh, well, no, the older brother pretends like, yeah, the older brother pretends like it was him that burned it. And he's driving them basically to his house so he can torture them for endless amounts of time. He gets them there, uh, ties the girl up in the house, and ties the two guys out in the barn. Um, and then... Fucking Jordana Brewster basically spends like half the movie just trying to find out where they are. <laughs> and she runs into this this biker guy who the the other biker girl was his girlfriend. And fucking, it seems like it takes them half the movie to get there to find them. And they go on a search to try to, of course, find out where their friends are and loved ones or whatever. And um, meanwhile, back at the house, uh, fucking Arlie Army is entertaining once again. Best part about this movie tortures him, uh, uh, he tortures the older brother by putting fucking saran wrap on his face and like smothering him and and then when the younger brother admits to him that it was him that burned his draft card he fucking takes a knife and stabs it directly in the mouth uh, with saran wrap so he can breathe pretty good scene I like to know how they pulled that off but maybe it was a CGI blade or something I'm not for sure but it was a good scene or retractable blade but it was a good scene um then he gets the fucking younger brother down and makes him do uh, 20 push ups of course there's time lapses in this section here, and it's obviously he doesn't do 20 push-ups. He does about, like, I guess 10, maybe. I don't know. But he's, he's got to do 20 push-ups. He tells him he'll let him go, and he fucking does them, and then he knocks him out and says, My money says he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it's an entertaining scene, the push-up scene I liked. I enjoyed that. Um, But anyway, after that, uh, the older brother manages to get loose. He takes the younger brother, and they fucking cause a diversion so they can try to save the, the younger brother's girlfriend. Uh, Bailey, they get her out of there. Um, uh, the fucking Hoyt, the sheriff. I'm just gonna call him Arlie Motherfucking Army because <laughs> he cusses so much. But anyway, so Arlie Motherfucker comes out there after him. Um, they're getting away. Uh, Bailey jumps in the the wrecker and takes off driving in it. They uh, well, old farts wrecker and takes off driving in it. Uh, Arlie motherfucker is holding, uh, the, uh, older guy hostage. Well, not holding him hostage, but he's got the gun pointed at him, and he's, like, in the way while the younger brother is getting away. 
I think he and the older the older brothers like taunting him like you candy ass you motherfucker why don't you pull the fucking trigger? And then the un, uh younger brother he fucking just gets caught in a bear trap. Well, no. And I'm like what? Like you know this is a prequel so you know everyone's going to die. Everybody in this film is going to die. So what is the point? You, why care about these characters when you know that they just have no fucking chance of surviving? I mean who gives a shit? <laughs> But uh, he's got them. He he. Well, he takes the. He just leaves the younger brother out there because he can't go anywhere. I guess because he gets foot caught in the bar trap. So he takes the older brother in there. Um, he gets Leatherface to take him downstairs. Uh, fucking the. Uh, well, he takes him downstairs, and you get a really graphic scene where Leatherface fucking skins his arm, and it's pretty. It's a cool scene. The gore and stuff is fine, but this film just overdoes all the gore in the film, just deliberately to overdo it because that's the only thing it's got going for it. But anyway, he skins his arm. Uh, Jordana Burster manages to finally make it there with the asshole biker, and they get inside the house, and she's down there uh, checking on her boyfriend and shit, and he's up there, and he gets Arlie Army at gunpoint, shoots the old fart in the legs, because he has legs, and this one he's not in a wheelchair. Shoots old fart in the legs, um, uh, takes Arlie Army hostage because he's trying to find his girlfriend. He could easily just blow his brains out and just find her anyway, but whatever. Or just get somebody in the, house, other in the somebody else in the fucking house to help him find her, but whatever. You know he's gonna die, so useless once again. He takes Arlie Army at gunpoint, and then Leatherface jumps out, saves Arlie Army. You get a good chainsaw death here, the first one in the film. He saw either he's laying on top of the saw, the biker is, and he Leatherface starts it up and fucking pulls it up to him. It's a decent scene, but once again, the biker character minds nothing. There's no purpose for him in here. And the older brother character is supposed to be like he's supposed to have been in Vietnam before, so he's supposed to have like military skills and fighting skills you see none of that here i mean this guy couldn't fight his way up a fucking paper bag <laughs> but whatever uh, oh and before i forget uh you got another scene when they were first trying to escape and the bailey character jumped in the record and she was driving off leatherface like fucking hooks her from the side and pulls her out of the record it's a decent scene he drags her on the hook and you're like ooh. but anyway yeah that was a good scene i almost forgot about that one because to be honest this movie is just not memorable I have trouble remembering stuff in the remake because I don't watch it that much and pay much attention to it because there's no reason for it to exist. And this film is even less memorable because there's even less of a reason for this film to exist. But whatever. <clears throat> that was a good scene where he was dragging her by the hook. And then fucking, uh, like I said, uh, the biker's dead. Back down there in the fucking basement, he uh, chainsaws through the older older brother, the fucking Dean. Uh, well, not Dane, fuck, Eric. His name is Eric. I'm getting the brothers confused because they're kind of interchangeable. <laughs> There's not really much to their characters. One was in Vietnam, and but he has no battle skill, and the other one's just a younger guy who doesn't want to go to Vietnam. But uh, he fucking chainsaws Eric. It's an entertaining scene. Once again, Gore is all it's got going for it. He ch fucking cuts his face off. Entertaining there. Uh, very graphic. Uh, Jordana Brewster ma uh, manages, uh, sees her dead boyfriend and trips her out like it with anybody she fucking sneaks out of there she has a chance to leave but doesn't want to because she hears her here's that uh, here's bailey like screaming or whatever she wants to go back and try to help her and try to save her she doesn't want to ditch her friends so uh, she fucking goes up there to help bailey escape uh but of course this amounts to nothing once again arlie army is there that he he's fucking caesar <laughs> useless because we know none of this shit's gonna work out he fucking takes Bailey. I mean, he well, he takes Bailey and Jordana Brewster's characters, and they wake up and they're in the fucking dinner table. Another dinner table scene, which I enjoyed, was missing from the remake, and I enjoy it here. So we get a dinner table scene. It's mildly entertaining. Nothing amazing here. No grandpa. Disappointed. <laughs> but um, oh, and before I forget, cause the old fart got shot in the legs. Uh, fucking Leatherface saws his legs off because Arlen Army just tells him to saw his entire legs off just cause he's got shot in them like whatever but it's okay i mean the scene is and it's kind of funny because he saws both his legs off instead of just the one he got shot in <laughs> and uh, fucking he's like why'd you do that uh, well the mama character's like why'd you do that for and he's like balance <laughs> it's mildly funny and it kind of it uh, shows how like crazy arlen army's character is but once again it's just there to serve her for serve plot purpose to explain why he ha he's in a fucking wheelchair in the remake and if that's all, you're just going to try to establish here, like, why is he in a fucking wheelchair and stuff like that, or why Arlie Army has no teeth, which we find out later, or no front teeth. 
<laughs> this all could have been done in dialogue in just a matter of minutes, but whatever. You don't need a whole story for just why this guy has no legs. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. They're having, they're having a dinner table scene. It's mildly entertaining. Uh, Bailey is there. She gets killed. The other face slits her throat. And in, once again, the gore is good. It's an entertaining scene. Uh, he slits her throat with a pair of scissors. Uh, it's entertaining, but amounts to nothing because we already know she's going to die. So who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? But anyway, so uh, he Leatherface is taking... Um, taking uh, Jordana Brewster's character down into the basement. He he starts to take her down in there, and she fucking grabs this little implement and stabs him in the back with it, manages to get away, run outside, you get a redone scene from the fucking original where she leaps through a window. <laughs> but uh, Leatherface takes off chasing after her with a chainsaw, entertaining. We finally get a Leatherface chase in this film with him chasing after her with a chainsaw. Um, The... Younger brother, uh, Dean, he wakes up. He was at the dinner table. They thought he was dead. He wakes up. Harley Army is standing outside. He fucking clubs the shit right out of him straight in the face. And he starts bashing his head against the ground. And it's a really cool scene. And fucking he spits out his teeth and shit. But you, it's a cool scene. And it's some good comeuppance. But he fucking... It's useless because you know Harley Army is not going to die. And this is just a scene is only here to serve the purpose of why he lost his teeth. It's a really good scene. And the the, young, the younger brother plays it well. The Dean character, I mean. But uh, it's fucking useless. It's useless. <laughs> so he runs off to go help uh, Jordana Brewster's character, Chrissy. Um, she fucking makes it back to the slaughterhouse. I believe it's the slaughterhouse. It's the one where Leatherface worked at the beginning of the film. I don't know if it's the same one from the remake. The, uh, <laughs> but uh, I assume it is. But anyway, she makes it back there. Uh, she finds the dead boss. Um, she's uh, she hides in like a little pool of blood or whatever with a knife. Leatherface uh, finds her. She slices him on the side of the face and or the ear or something. He tries to chainsaw her. Dean shows up, fucking hacks him in the back and doesn't keep hacking. Instead, just runs over there and tries to help uh Jordana Burster. And then he gets chainsawed in the back and lifted like straight up towards the camera. And it's a really entertaining scene. The blood's like fucking shooting out towards the camera and everything. This really helped raise the movie up for me. I really enjoyed this uh, gore right here and this death scene. It's really entertaining. But uh, according to the commentary, the, the, the straight at the camera uh, scene wasn't even in the fucking uh, R-rated version. Which I can see why. Because it's pretty damn intense and gory. But I'm just, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that I'd probably dislike the film even more in the R-rated version. But anyway, so Dean's dead. Fucking useless. Uh. She takes off, and I will never forgive the movie for this. Never forgive the movie for this. She got the boss's keys, the dead boss there from the slaughterhouse. She got his keys. Fucking get rid of hop in his car and head out of there. And this will aggravate me till the end of time. She's gonna leave. Uh, fucking Leatherface makes that out of there. Leatherface, I, he doesn't know where she's going. He doesn't know she's got the keys. <laughs> Keep in mind now, Leatherface is supposed to have like the brain power of a marshmallow. <laughs> Or he's supposed to be pretty stupid. So Leatherface somehow makes it to the car before she does. Hides in the back seat of the car. She doesn't see him in the back seat of the car. This big motherfucker. She doesn't see him in the back seat of the car. She gets in the car, takes off driving. He pops up in the back seat of the car, saws through the back seat, and there's hardly no room at all. And it'd be impossible to start a chainsaw back there in the fucking back seat of that vehicle without sawing yourself or just sawing random parts of the vehicle. But whatever, <laughs> that logic hole right there almost makes me hate this movie. I can kind of buy her not seeing him when she gets in the vehicle. Even if he's crouched down, there's no way that she wouldn't be able to see him. But where she's in a panic and shit, I guess I can buy it. But there's no way in hell, there is no way that he'd be able to start this fucking chainsaw in the back seat of this vehicle. I'm sorry. No, just no way, movie. Just no. I won't give you that. No way. <laughs> and she dies. He saws her through the seat. And it's like, okay. What the fuck ever? She's dead. We knew it was going to happen because this is a prequel, so why give a shit about any of these people? Why even fucking make a prequel? Just make a sequel and have, like, prequel flashbacks. But whatever. <laughs> it's fucking useless. There's no story here to this film. There's nothing here. Nothing here. It's almost the exact same setup as the remake, where it's just a bunch of kids who randomly get into... <laughs> Same situation, they get tortured for a while instead of one of them getting away. <laughs> they fucking all die. 
we don't learn anything new about this family at all. All we learn is how early army lost his teeth and how old Fark got crippled. I mean, got well, yeah, I got crippled. I ain't got no legs, whatever. Uh, I mean, it's like, who gives a fuck about this shit? You could have answered all this in one fucking minute of, well, just a, well, not one minute, but just a few fucking minutes of dialogue. Maybe even, well, probably just like six minutes of dialogue probably could have answered all this. In the fucking remake, they could, they could just say, all I remember going, you know how I lost my teeth? I got my fucking brains beat out by some kid trying to escape. And that old fart guy had to saw his legs off. The end. Because <laughs> he got shot. I mean, that's all. That's all you needed. That, that's it. There's no story here. Nothing to this fucking movie. The gore is good. The actors do fine. Once again, they're fine. Uh, all the kid actors, they're all passable and fine. Um, Jordana Burster, she's okay as the lead. I mean, her acting is fine, but her character doesn't really get to do anything. <laughs> Jessica Bill got a lot more to do in the, the, the remake. So this character, uh, this one spends most of the time just running around the woods, half the movie trying to fucking make it to the Chainsaw Family's house. But whatever. <laughs> so everybody dies, cue in the movie. It's over. It's like, absolutely useless. There's no reason for this film to exist. No reason whatsoever, other than money. No reason. This is a two-star film of a possible four. It's a decent film. There's nothing exciting or amazing here. The only thing that raises this film up from an okay film to a decent film is the gore. The gore. That's it. That is all. <laughs> if it wasn't for the gore, this film would probably be worse than part three, to be honest. Because it's just so useless. But uh, anyway, this is a two-star film. Um, the remake is better than this film. Because it actually, it, well, the story in it feels like it serves more of a purpose. And the story in this one's just useless because you don't need a prequel. You just don't. It's useless. Because you're not make, well, you can make a prequel. I mean, it could be interesting making a prequel to the Chainsaw Family. But uh, you have to have an actual story there to tell. I mean, actually tell why this family is psychotic. Not just that they're psychotic because they're psychotic. And I know that demystifies the characters because it's a prequel. But that's the whole purpose of a prequel is to tell these stories. that they're, whether, If there's an interesting story to tell. And evidently there wasn't because this family is just psychotic to begin with. So it's fucking useless. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with my final Texas Chainsaw Massacre review. It's going to obviously be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. That film isn't any good either, and I would say this film is only mildly better than that film because it has gore in it. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with that review, and I hope you have a good day. Um, and if you're a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, I hope you've enjoyed these reviews. In my opinion, for this franchise thus far, watch the first movie, watch the second movie, watch the third movie if you're curious. Stay away from the fourth movie. Don't bother with the remake because there's no reason for it to exist, regardless of the fact that it's a, it's a good movie and not a bad movie. It's just not a great classic film like the original, but there's still no reason for it to exist. Um, watch it only if you want to. This film, don't even bother, even though it's just a, even though it's a decent film, but just because of the gore. Uh, you can just watch the gore scenes probably on YouTube, and you get exactly out of, out of the <laughs> you get exactly as much out of the film as I did just from that. But anyway, and as for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, I'll tell you when I when I get to that when I get to that video. But well, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just tell you right now. Just don't even waste your time with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Don't even bother. Just don't bother. You know what? Don't even watch any film after the first and second one. There's no reason. <laughs> There's no reason. But anyway, I'll see you guys again with the final review for this franchise, and uh, I hope you guys have a good day.